Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video I'm going to show you how to make these brass hammers from PSI, Penn State. Now some of my techniques may not be approved by the supplier or manufacturer of products so follow my techniques at your own risk, although I think they're pretty good. And stick around to the end for some extra techniques and information that you'll want to see. Also, consider subscribing and joining our community by clicking on that little red icon down in the lower right corner and be sure to hit the bell icon so you won't miss anything. And please hit that thumbs up to give me a like. And be sure to read the description below as it contains additional information, updates, and corrections. So, let's get to this project now. This brass hammer head comes in a box like this from PSI. And inside, basically, what you get is some instructions. Two-sided page. Shows you assembly and turning tips and tricks and techniques. And I have a few more to share with you later on here as we go through this. A few tricks I've learned with doing a few of these already. Comes with uh, a half inch threaded rod. Uh, it's 13 TPI, teeth per inch, and it's three inches long. Then you have your brass head, hammer head, in this package, and this is 12.2 ounces. It's rather hefty. This threaded rod will screw into this. And once you've got your handle turned and hole drilled in the end of it and everything's ready to go, then this will push into this hammer handle and with an epoxy glue inside there, that'll hold it all together. And if you're lucky, you'll be able to unscrew the head if you want to, uh, in case you ever need to replace this or replace the hammer handle because they can break on occasion. So, if you do break it, you can always get your hammer head off, get another 3 inch, half inch by 13 TPI threaded rod, and you're in business to make another one. That's all you need to it. So, okay, so the first step is they say use a 5.5 to a 7 inch uh, blank. It's at least 1 inch, 1.5 inch square. And we'll drill a hole in the end of it two and three quarter inches deep. They recommend drilling a half inch diameter hole into the, one of the end of the blanks for putting the rod into. But I found that to be kind of loose myself. So I went with using one step down from that and using a 31 64th drill bit. And that seems to make a good fit. The thread still slides into there okay. And if you want to, you can actually take a tap and actually tap out that a little bit so you can use perhaps some bolts or something for some other turning or finishing uh, applications as I'll show. So next step I go to the drill press. I've got this uh, I'm using a piece of Red River gum burl here which has got some voids and stuff in it. It's kind of a natural part of this type of wood and so it's might be kind of a dicey thing to make a hammer handle out of because it looks like they got a lot of cross grains on it and I don't know how well that's going to hold up to pressures on that like that. So I'll go to the drill press. I already went over my jointer, got all the edges squared up and flat so I can get some good uh, alignment on the things that I'm going to do here. So I'll go to the drill press now, drill the hole in the end for fitting the rod into and for doing the turning process. Okay, whenever I'm preparing a spindle for turning, I gotta find the centers on both ends of the spindle so I can line this up correctly on my lathe to avoid as much wobble as possible. So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. One of the ways is using a center finding tool such as this and placing it on here, trying to hold it consistently in a consistent way. Just make a mark in the middle, rotate it um, all four times because you're going to find out 
that the center line is different than what you may think. Sometimes it's off a little bit. It's like this one. It's off just a bit and what we want to do is find exact center there and scribe that with a scratch all to make a dimple in there for our lathe tools to get a grasp into there and be on center. Also with drilling too. Another way that I like to do it is I take the other end and I like using this squid. Uh, it's called a blocks squid and what I do is to locate it on here on the four corners as well as I can and to get it you know relatively straight and level here and then all I do is take a hammer tap the end of the pin and I've got a fairly good center on that. Another way too is to lay out a straight ruler if you can find some sharp ends to kind of like line up with uh, it's like this and then this end one kind of corner is kind of missing there it's just kind of hard to guess at it so you can see that it's not quite as exacting either so I think I like this block squids the best and otherwise going around it four times with the center finder and then finding a center between any uh, spaces between the lines. So here I've drilled my hole with this 31 64 bit to two and three quarter inches deep and next step I'm going to do is go over to my bandsaw and trim off these corners so it'll be easier for turning. Alright so here I'm going to trim the four corners of this spindle so I have less uh, corners to hit when I'm turning this on the lathe. Here at the lathe, I'm going to mount my piece on here, my spindle piece, and I'll we'll put it on. I've got this spur drive on this end and a 60 degree life center cone on this end. Life center means that it spins uh, while this is spinning. So this will mount onto here. It will get a grip. I'll slide up my tailstock to here, lock it down. Then I loosen up the quill here a little bit, advance the quill about a third to half a turn to get it good and snug. And then lock this back in again and I'll be ready to go. So next I'll put on my, on my banjo here, I'll put on my tool rest. Get this lined up with my tool for getting this shape to a round with a roughing gouge just to get it to a round cylindrical shape. Then I, thereafter I will shape this to the shape that it needs to be. Okay so here at the lathe I've got my spindle on here. It's got the facets or flat surfaces on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this so it's a round cylindrical shape. And I'll be using my one inch roughing gouge to do this. So I'll get this going and get this rounded out. Looks like I need to tighten up my tailstock a little bit so it won't slip as much.
Okay, we've got this to a fairly good round cylindrical shape. Now I'm going to start shaping it to make a hammer handle out of it. So one of the things I need to do is I need to make a tenon on this end here. This has got that half inch drill hole in it. And this part here is where it's going to get parted once I've got this shaped and so forth. So I need to turn this down um, to a three quarter inch tenon on this end. But what I need to do is to go in at least one quarter of an inch to shape that tenon. So put my ruler on here and measure in a quarter inch, make a pencil mark. And I'll do that in several points here. So that when this is spinning, I can see these marks and then mark it with a pencil better while it's spinning. Okay. So I can see that mark there. Probably hard for you to see it. A little bit of touch with my pencil. I've got that marked out. This is the part that's going to have to go down to a three-quarter inch diameter tenon on this for fitting onto the hammer handle head. Then from this point I'll shape out the handle out to the end. To about this point here we'll do some parting on it. Here I'm going to turn down this end of the blank here to a three-quarter inch diameter by a one-quarter inch long tenon. And I'll keep checking that with my calipers as I'm going through this to get this at three-quarter inch. My calipers are set at three-quarter inch apart here. Now I'm going to turn this down to a certain point until I start getting close to running into this tailstock live end here. Then once I get down close to that, I'll start finishing it off with a parting tool. Alright, so I've got this tenon down to a three quarter inch, and so from here. I'll start shaping this from this point back to the end of the handle here to get a kind of a gradual slope to it. I'm going to stop and feel it and see how it's feeling. I got some uh, shapes in there. Feels pretty good. But I'll show you if I can get this a little bit straighter and smoother. That's feeling pretty good. A lot of these voids that you see in here will kind of give you a funny feel when you're turning this while it's spinning. If you'd stop and get it on some relatively smooth edges here with your fingers, you can feel if there's any ridges in there or not. This is down pretty good. Now what I'm going to do later on is I'm going to fill all these voids with some epoxy glue and then I'll let that cure and then I'll turn it up to finish up again. For now I'm going to start shaping where my parting is going to be at. Okay, I've got it down to a point here on the part where I'm not going to go any further. I'm going to keep this on here yet as I do some more uh, filling in the gaps and then some more smoothing it out and then some finishing. Actually what I'm going to do here is to use some CA glue. I've got some gap filling glue here and I'm going to use that to fill in the holes there. Then I'm going to use some of the sawdust here from the shavings from the turning. Rub those into there and try and get them packed in. Now 
there are some big gaps. So I'll let that set up and dry for a bit, then I'll come back and check them out and add some more to it. I finished filling in all these voids on here, got it in pretty good shape and I went over it again with my roughing gouge to get it smooth and now it's good to go to sand. So I'm going to sand this from 150 grit up to 600 grit. I'll slow down my lathe quite a bit to about 6 to 800 and just kind of work my way along these until they're good and smooth. I do a lot of the primary body of it here, sanding, and then I'll get into these other edges here by going in with the sandpaper like this at an angle to get to those edges, get those smoothed out, and I'll work on those. And the same for at this end here, I kind of use this to uh, flex here a bit for me so I can work along this finer curve here and get that sanded. Get this all to a consistent, great pin shape. All right, I've gotten to this point here where I've got this finished with a turning finish, and it's coming out quite well. A lot better than I expected for how gnarly this piece looked at first. So, my next step here in the process is I'm going to part this. And then I'll do the finishing on the very end of this here. Okay, so next what I gotta do is knock off this nib at the end here then sand the end of this smooth and finish the end of it here. I have this theory where I screwed on this handle. I ran a tap inside this handle after I took it off the lathe because uh, it's just a plain uh, whatever that diameter was that I drilled on it. I'll probably put it in the pop-up on the screen below. And then I ran a tap that's a half inch by 13 thread through that and tap it out a little bit to give it a little bit of thread so I can put it on this. And this is a bolt actually that I bought. It's a half inch bolt, uh, the 13 TPI, and a nut that I put on there just as a, kind of a safety thing for screwing this on there. And then I cut off the head of the bolt. So I'm using this to insert lay the drill chuck. Okay. And I can screw this on. And see how this works here. Starting out at slow speed, and I can see that I've got a bit of a wobble on this thing here. So if I take it up to speed, as far as trimming off any edges on the back here, I'm afraid it's going to be too out of control to work with a lathe. About 3500 RPM there. That's just too much of a vibration there to try and do this. So, well, I'm going to cut in here and give you a little bit of note here about how to line things up when you're drilling the hole in that handle. Obviously, using a vertical jig for drilling holes on the drill press is not always that all perfect because a lot of variables in there on your drill press table and so forth and also you know how perfect is that vertical jig holding things so another alternative is to do it on your lathe and what you do is set up on your lathe first thing is check your lathe to make sure the two points on your headstock and your tailstock are lining perfectly. The next, using a drill chuck on one end and a blank holder 
on the other end I put the uh, headstock I'd use the blank holder that's going to spin the blank as you drill it and then a uh, stationary drill chuck on the tailstock that will be pushed in to drill the blank to the depth that you need and that's a common way they some people do drill you know their stock for doing turnings on the lathe so that's another good option that'll probably get you better in alignment and a lot less wobble when you're turning that on the lathe as a single piece what i'm going to do is go to my 1x30 belt sander take this nub off then i may come back here and sand this down to you know 600 grit so it's good and smooth and then finish it like that and you can also do it on the uh, 1x30 belt sander too you can take it down to a 600 grit there's a bunch of series of grits that you can get online and I'll put a link below to that anyways this is one of my theories of trying to test this out to see how well I can do this just here on the lathe without using a belt sander but don't think I'm going to totally escape the belt sander altogether. Here at my 1x30 belt sander, I'm going to take this nub off with this. I've got belts on this from uh, all the way from a 60 to a 600. And it works pretty well. Uh, it's just as far as you know, being able to control it and try to get a, a smooth sanding job out of it. It's a lot easier on the lathe to do that. So I might just take this nub off here with this. I'm starting out with an 80 belt. And then I'll maybe go back to the lathe and try and do some finer sanding on there. First I'll start this up, clean it off, and then sand off this nub. As you can see that made quick work of getting that off of there. Now as far as getting this a little more evenly rounded so there's not such a flat spot on there. I'll do a little bit more on here and then I'll probably go to the lathe to get it much smoother. It's a little bit tricky on doing it on something like this because it's easy to get some facets or like flat spots on there like a diamond or something like that. You want it to be perfectly smooth all the way around. So I'm pretty close on here, so I think I'm going to take this back to the lathe now and finish it up further and then put on the final coat of finish. Back at the lathe here, I'm going to sand this end here smooth with a bunch of these sanding papers for on the lathe and from about a 150 to 600 grit. Get that smoothed up and then I'll apply a finish on the end. And what I'm going to do is run this at a slower speed, around 600 to 800 RPM for sanding and that won't at least wobble so much I mean that uh, get it out of control that's getting really good and smooth and even and evenly rounded without any noticeable edges all right so I've got that finished to that up to 600 grit I'm going to go over it with uh, some four knot steel wool. That helps polish it a little bit better. It makes it a lot smoother. I like to try and wipe it uh, the cloth to take off any sanding dust. I'm going to turn the speed down to the low. Use some of my turning finish here. Put that on there and apply it. I'll give that some time to dry and do a few more coats. Now I'm down to the point of assembling the handle onto the hammer head. We'll put those parts together. So the tools you're going to need, you're going to need to use some epoxy glue, two part epoxy, your parts here, and a clamp for clamping this together once we get the glue in there and everything. And a little piece of wax paper here I use for mixing up the epoxy with. I'll get this going.
Now make sure your hands are clean and you don't have any sticky epoxy on it because you hate to mess up the finish on this if you got some glue on there. I'm going to do a scrape up some here. Uh, it kind of drips a little bit. And then I want to do is kind of scrape this off inside the uh, cavity there that I'm going to put the screw into. So I have some paper towel handy so you can wipe off any excess that may be on the end here. Then I want to put this threaded rod inside the hammerhead here until it stops. Basically, we're going to slide this in and push it and twist it at the same time to spread the glue out in there. And sometimes you want to push it up so it's all the way up there. And sometimes you want to make sure you get this handle oriented in such a manner that you got the most interesting part showing where you want it to show. And now what we're going to do is clamp this together. So that the air pressure inside there doesn't make this come apart on me. Doesn't take a lot of clamping pressure, just enough to hold it in place as the glue sets up. Well, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you got some inspiration, please give me a like and hit that thumbs up icon. Also, please share it with your family, friends, and fellow craftspersons. And please subscribe by hitting on that little red icon down in the lower right corner. And be sure to hit the bell icon so you won't miss any new videos or posts that may be useful to you. But please leave your comments and I'd like to hear what you think, your suggestions, and what you may be interested in seeing. Also, please participate in the community posts on my home screen here. Now we get to share a lot of information there on a lot of topics. For more information and links, see the description below. There's a lot of great information there, so check back often. I also post updates and corrections there. So, as they say on the Red Green Show, if the ladies don't find you handsome, at least they should find you handy. Thank you. Mm -hmm.